good. Um, I'm excited, you know. I, I Words can't describe, like, it's the, the first event, you know, like the for me. And it's the championship card. You know, I didn't expect to be on such a, such a huge card right off the bat. But, you know, honestly, it feels like all the hard work through the years kind of is finally paying off here, you know. So I'm really excited. And then what are your overall goals with the PFL? Um, I mean, to put it bluntly, bring PFL to Asia. You know, I think that was one of the main reasons why, you know, this, this whole deal kind of went down with me and, you know, the PFL. But um, first off is just to contribute, you know, uh, to the younger talent, you know, development and all that stuff. I think I, I keep saying uh, going into this fight, I'm a, I'm a late bloomer, you know. That just means I get better as time goes on. So I'm really hoping to add some value now that I've been a little bit more seasoned and developed. And then, from my understanding, one of your teammates is uh, none other than Mark Zuckerberg. Is this correct? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. <laughs> so, I, let me just ask you, is it true? Is this guy actually that good at martial arts? It's like, what's it like training with uh, Mark Zuckerberg? Um, well, the, the issue with people going like, well, how good is he? It's like, if you compare him to like a UFC fighter, a PFL, high-level uh, PFL fighter, and all these things, it's like... You know, like what? What are you, what are you categorizing him as? But someone that's as successful as him, um, at his age, you know, getting into martial arts, it's like, man, he he, he takes it very seriously. It's not a gimmick. It's not like um, an act where he's doing this for fun, and then like you don't expect to see him um, in in the next couple weeks. It's like, no, he's been doing it for a while. He's really disciplined and really, really. Uh, I'm not kidding when I say this. Like a student of the game. Like he asks questions. You know. People want to say, he's not a real fighter, he's never fought, but it's like, okay, at the same time, though, I think he's a martial artist then, you know? Um, if you want to get technical, he's a martial artist because he trains a lot, and this is his, like, coffee, you know, in the morning. He likes to train. And then last one for me, uh, thoughts on your opponent, Phil Caracappa, and a prediction for your first fight in this mark cage. Ooh, uh, I think he's tough. You know, I, I, I'm... I'm getting a really tough guy, someone with more fights than me, more experience, bigger, faster, stronger. But, you know, I like to think that I rise to the occasion. And I think uh, perhaps there might be some underestimation on my, uh, on, on my opponent's part. So maybe I capitalize and look for a finish. Thanks so much, Ken. Yeah. Dylan. Hey there, Kai. I appreciate you making the time. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, guys. I guess just the first question I had, because I saw you had a post a bit ago talking about how it was kind of surreal being that you fought for Bellator in 2018 and now signed with PFL. I think you've got interesting localized insights. Like, What are your thoughts on this recent merger between PFL and Bellator? Man, I, I think it's, it's, it is still surreal. Like I was chatting with my teammates and, and, and you know, all that. It's like, who would have thought, you know, um, we'd end up here, you know, like I, I I think they, they say, a lot of people will say be realistic, but you know, a lot of the things that have happened, I think are very unrealistic and like what timing, you know what I mean? And to, to be a part of this historical moment in MMA where I fought for Bellator 2018, I wanted to fight for him again. And then years late, five years later, after being a pro, I'm signed with PFL. On the fight week, they announced the merger and on top of that, um, you know, the the fact that I'm the first PFL uh, bantamweight fight is just a lot of like historical moments kind of going on. And um, one thing I learned back when I was fighting for Bellator is I never really took in the moments. Now I'm just kind of like enjoying it, letting it soak in, you know, letting it uh, feel like letting the, the feelings kind of just go through um, as opposed to just go like, man, this is awesome. And then just, you know, forget to kind of enjoy the moment. So I'm really enjoying this moment now. Yeah, well, I love hearing how present you can be for all of this. And I guess just a quick follow-up question to that, because Mark Zuckerberg was mentioned. I saw you got to see him compete. Is he going to be, you know, returning the favor, getting to see you compete in the smart cage here? I'm sure um, at some point, but I think it's it's kind of uh, the, the tough part about that is it's this week where it's like Thanksgiving and, you know, like my, my, my family isn't even coming just because uh, – you know, there's a lot of like moving parts. It's not so easy. And also, I think what's nice is this fight is broadcasted on, on ESPN, you know. So for everyone that wants to watch, they could just tune in there and see me all around the world. I know I have a lot of uh, fans over in Asia that is finally getting to see me on the big screen, you know, instead of, <clears throat> you know, the smaller shows or this and that. Now it's like official on ESPN, you know. So I, I'm, 
I'm excited about that. So I think he might be tuning in there. I don't know. He's he's kind of a busy guy. Kind of runs a company. Yeah, he might have a thing or two on the go. Just yeah, ask. yeah, Very exactly. Excited to see this fight all the same though. So thanks for the insights, man. Yeah, yeah, no worries. <clears throat> Mike. Just curious, you talked about the kind of importance and monumental moments that have been happening coming into this week. Uh, for you, also someone mentioning, you know, how you're getting started at a later stage. Isn't that the beauty of this sport, though, that you can come in really at, and we talked, you know, Mark Zuckerberg was mentioned, you can come in at any point, no matter what stage of life or how old you are, and, and you can compete among some of the very best martial artists in the world, which you'll have the opportunity to do this weekend. Yeah, I think it comes down to comparison, you know, like if you can compare me to, you know, someone like Biagio, then I'm way behind, you know, but that's the thing. You don't compare yourself to, to others on this journey because his journey started off different than mine. So, you know, and then on top of that, if you do comparisons, you're not going to really be happy for yourself or for others. You end up with this jealous mindset. But the thing is, it's like, I love seeing other people successful. You know, you don't want to wish, uh, downfall anyone so i am right where i'm supposed to be and then you know same thing with mark like he got into it later on in life but guess what he's still doing great you know and what are your goals at the end of the day you know i don't think he wanted to be a, a pro fighter you know i think he, he he did what he did is very successful at it and i'm currently doing what i'm doing and as a result by talking to you guys i think it, it, it somewhat says that it's paying off you know the hard work slowly paying off so i think um what you said is correct. Like anyone can start off. That's the beauty of it. But I think the key thing is going in there with a the mentality of not comparing uh, your journey or your path with anyone else's because your yours might have had more twists and turns than someone else's. You know, and it's hard to compare those those numbers and you know get an exact like replica of how someone's career should go. So you know, I, I'm just happy uh, to be here. And like you said, it's 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 a beauty. What do you make having this platform though? Because you fought for multiple organizations, the aforementioned Bellator, and you know Don Davis has already said like in five years, co-leader, not second place, not the second promotion, co-leader in this sport. And now you're on their stage and really have the opportunity to elevate not only with the promotion, but your career itself. Uh, how excited are you coming into this fight week? Oh, I mean, it, it's incredible, but um... Now that I'm with PFL and I'm signed to them and Bellator is the acquisition, you know, uh, it's my job now to speed up that process. Uh, when he says five years, I'm doing my best to try to get it sooner, you know, maybe three years. So my job is now to fight hard for the, my spot in this company and help it elevate and take it to the next level other than just fighting, you know, because it's, it's an exchange, right? They give me a platform. And I just need to perform and, and help them out on in that department. So, you know, it's, it's a job and I'm really looking forward to it because when you like your job and you like who you work with, it makes things heck of a lot easier. Last one for me and I appreciate the time. Uh, throughout all your stops and all the promotions you've fought for, what is the biggest thing you've learned through it all and, and are you bringing that with you here to the PFL? Um, there's a lot of lessons. I, I, I think the one that stands out the most is just like I was saying, enjoying the moment because a lot of these things, they're like, man, I, like you're very jittery, you know, you're just constantly on one and you're like, man, I, I, I need to get this done. And you're just kind of uh, spazzing out, if you will. It's almost like you're, you're on like caffeine and just amped up. For me, it's like, you know, just enjoy the moment, chat with the people behind the scenes. Um, a lot of people tend to go into fight weeks, just kind of like laser focused on their fights as they should be. But I like to say thank you to the people behind the cameras and you know, like the, the people that are doing the interviews, appreciate you guys. And just chatting with everyone, getting to know everyone's backstory. Take, I, I like taking my mind off the fight when I'm heading into it, because no matter what, it's gonna happen. There's no point in putting yourself through it twice, you know? So that's kind of how I'm going into it with that lesson. Jay, Christian. Kai Wu, Shadow, how are you, sir? It's Jay Christian Gary at Focus Vice Audio. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I'm good. I see, I see. Now, as has been mentioned throughout this entire little session here, you come into the PFL with a lot of hype behind you, fighting in Asia, you know, fighting up and down the California coast, fighting for Bellator, hell, even hanging out and teaming up with Zuck on a few training sessions. But when you fight against Phil Kawakapa being a showcase 
and I hate to correct you on this, it's not on ESPN, it's on ESPN+. Plus. But what do you think fight fans will get out of seeing you compete in a major promotion for the first time? Well, for the second time, actually. Um, yeah, I think, thanks for the correction. Um, I think, I think what it does is it's just <clears throat> the accumulation of the support I've brought, it takes it to a, a whole nother level. You know, people that have been tuning in or on the fence about it, and also the people that don't know who I am, it just gives me a bigger platform. You know, I already know how to do all the behind the scenes stuff. So now it's just like putting myself out there and competing against someone um, as tough as my opponent, I think it adds to my resume. It takes my fighting career one step further. And then on top of that, you know, just getting to uh, chat with more people, opening up, maybe uh, combining the the markets of potentially here in Asia. You know, I think that's that's a good capture. You know, so that's that's one of my goals heading into this fight is just bridging uh, markets and opening up new doors. Mm-hmm. And as you mentioned, you are a fighter of Asian American descent. You probably want to bring PFL into Asia, but you also come into this carrying obviously the whole culture on your shoulders. How do you, I mean, how would you be able to help the next Asian American superstar or success story, regardless of what genre of entertainment or even if they don't even follow entertainment, with your skills as an athlete? Well, first and foremost, it would have to be putting the spotlight on them. There's so much more talent that's starting out. I mean, the fact that they don't have the greatest coaching or the knowledge or a platform to shine on. There's guys that I've met over in Asia where they're more talented than I am, just gifted. So I want to open up the doors Mm -hmm. and and bring them in. You know what I mean? Just give them a a chance to shine and introduce them to the world. So at the end of the day, I think my job is not only just to fight, but also to do well enough to get enough attention on me where I have a platform and a voice to kind of – give it to everyone that I think deserves a, a shot too, you know? A rising tide ra- raises all ships, and that's my mentality yeah. kind of going into it. Exactly. Well, other than that, you know, I hope you do well in your fight against Mr. Karakapa. You know, best of skill to you, and by the way, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. You're welcome. Mills, please uh, finish us up with Kai. Hey, how's it going? It's MMA Locker Room, part of Pup Sports Radio. How you doing, Shadow? Good. How are you? I'm doing awesome, man. I just want to ask you something, man. One of your fights, you finished your opponent with a Peruvian necktie. Can you walk me through that finish and how that happened? Because, I mean, a lot of people ain't able to finish their opponents with uh, prestige submissions like that. Oh, man, what if I was going to submit my opponent with this? Now you have me spill the secrets. Um it's uh, it's actually correct, and it's not a Peruvian necktie. The Peruvian necktie is a different grip, but uh, I call mine the Chinese necktie just because it's like you know, there's a Japanese necktie, there's a there's a all sorts of neckties. I was like, might as well make mine like Asian, you know. So um, it's just a grip difference, and the reason why I did that move is because um, when I was like 14, I did like a fun super fight in house at our gym, and and I, I was going against a brown belt. And he shot in on me. He was an adult. Um, and I was going to lose no matter what. But then for some reason, he did a lazy double leg. And I, I actually surprised him by sprawling him out. And then I threw on that submission because I actually watched it back in the day. I don't know who pulled I forgot who pulled it off. I'd love to give him credit for it. But I watched it on TV. And then I did it. Then I actually submitted him. And he was, you know, he was like, wow, I can't believe you did that. And then he was like, I'll beat you nine times out of ten. I'm like, I believe you. You know, maybe even ten times out of ten. It's just 0.1 chance he ran into me. And... You know, so I once I hit that move, um, I did a maybe like a hundred jujitsu tournaments, and I've pulled that off there. And then I was like, man, I never see this move in MMA, so I'm gonna throw it on and try it out. And then I ended up getting this mission. Got it. And then for the people that's not familiar with your fight style, um, a few words. How would you uh, describe your fight style? I would, <laughs> this is how I describe my my fighting career. I'd say it's like Batman. Like I, I I'm not, have none of the skills to hang with the big dogs. I just got to train extremely hard, use all the gadgets I got, like my TheraBody recovery tools to heal up my, my wounds because I can't heal up overnight. Um, but fight IQ, you know, I always have that kryptonite in my back pocket for everyone. And uh, give me prep time, which, you know, PFL does. They give me a contract months in advance and I have prep time. I think you can use that fight IQ and intelligence to, to beat my opponents. 
Got it. And last one for me, I mean, I know everybody's bringing up Mark Zuckerberg uh, training with you. I'm pretty sure he learned a lot of things off you, but can you tell us a few things that you actually learned off of him? Yeah, it's actually not fighting related at all. It's it's more discipline in life because he, he like rarely ever skips a day. And also, um, as I was saying before in a couple other interviews, um, I want to get my business uh, mindset better. You know, I see him super successful. He goes into fight. He's a businessman going into fighting. And then I want to be the fighter going into business, you know. So um, I don't know, maybe get into business after PFL, just tighten up, do my do some own things, you know, some ideas that I have. But yeah, that's what I learned from him.